Hello everyone. Let's get the music back up. <laughs> my model can't move fast enough to keep up with my the music. <laughs> the bobbing to the music. <coughs> Times for more voice acting. Ah, spooky high school, the sweetest years of our lives. Back then we were young and unafraid, sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. experience this ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly, three weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Huzzah! Miranda Vanderbilt, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Damien LeVay, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. <laughs> Scott Howell, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Liam de Lioncourt, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanour hid that he was, a, that he was truly a lovable dog. Yay! Polly Geist, a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. What? And Vera Oberlin, a mean self-made gorgon with a massive sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them, but who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Okay, let's try this. Welcome to Master Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. Our minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we are now using our PhD to diagnose which kind of demon sicko you are. Master Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever, TM, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character's stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. You wish you were raised by. Mysterious old man seven years sweet, some more ways it's red DJ. <laughs> uh, I've read out all of these in previous streams. Um, hmm. Cool. Ah, this is a new one. If you could put a curse on your worst enemy, what would it do? You can't rely on the effectiveness of a curse. I prefer to take care of my enemies the old-fashioned way, by exposing them to unsafe doses of radiation over the course of several years. The curse of always meeting obnoxious people at parties who are super into new fad diets that feel the need to explain them in detail. I'd curse them to fall in love with a wonderful person and be happily married for years before they realized that all this time their partner was a wild panther in disguise. Then the panther viciously devours my enemy. Classic. <laughs> hmm. I'm cursing my worst enemy. First, I need to imagine having an enemy. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like this would be the most effective. <laughs> yep, this. Uh... <laughs> your partner just gave you a cool gift for your anniversary, but you totally forgot. Quick, come up with an idea for a great gift. The head of the fiercest enemy. A pony. Always a pony. Any of anything on fire or a weapon. No, no, a weapon on fire. 
the abstract concept of a gratefulness. Anything capable of leading them to an overdose of some sorts. A silly toy that makes silly noises. Thought so. <laughs> smarts as usual. This time we're also high in fun. Hmm. Well, lower status creativity, so... That day while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to you. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rare by high school play standards. You gain plus two creativity. Hmm. Afterwards, you notice Scott huddled next to Vera. These two hardly even hang out. I wonder what's up. Scott seems to be showing Vera some kind of sports diagram. Oh, bro. But we just keep losing football games over and over. Coach says we're just not sporting hard enough, but I'm sporting as hard as I can. I figured, since you're super smart and everything, maybe you could fix your entire team in 10 minutes well, <laughs> well obviously i can do that i'm incredible listen what you need is an oblique strategy a new technique that your opponents won't expect like poison darts or a vicious campaign of psychological warfare or now's your chance to embrace them jump in with an idea that'll show them how much you know about winning sports what you guys need hmm, is blackmail material. One well-placed camera in the opposing team's locker room is all it takes. There's a player who's really a truck. No one would be able to stop them. Ooh. <laughs> this is probably smarts. So that would be boldness, I guess. Either boldness or fun. Let's go with the smart one. That's brilliant. Mm. It is? Yes, it is. Awesome, bro. Awesome. And what's more, I already have the infrastructure in place to accomplish this. Um, uh... Wait, infrastructure? What are you talking about? Nothing, nothing. I definitely haven't planted cameras in the men's locker room, and I'm definitely not selling them to compromising lock... Uh, compromising locker room nudes.com as a side miss. That's side miss this, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh, that's good, because if you were, that'd be super mean. Indeed. Looks like you solved the <laughs> problem and stumbled into Vera's underground empire. Nice. You gain plus two smarts and plus one creativity. You might be going a different route to, to the one we planned. Maybe. As you approach the table, you see Vera delicately lifting a forceful of a quinoa to her mouth. She brings light from home. When... <laughs> That's a new... Food, fork, six, six, eight, who do we do? Del Deliciate, eating, eating, yay, eating. Ah, Scott, what on earth are you doing? I'm cheerleading you to help you be the best eater in the whole school. Calls this obsession with cheerleading me through mundane activities that require no cheerleading. <laughs> Everything requires cheerleading, silly. That's why we have cheerleaders for our cheerleaders. But I can see my cheerleaders not working. You haven't eaten anything yet. That's because you keep startling me with your damn cheerleading. I can't eat when I'm startled. No, that can't be it. I must not be cheerleading hard enough. Hey friend, maybe you can help me. <laughs> you shouldn't be cheering for Vera to eat the food. You should be che cheering for the food to get eaten by Vera in the walk-in freezer. The problem is, obviously, that we aren't dressed up as a giant salad. I think that one's fun. That one would be smart. But I guess this is also a character decision. 
Later. Oh, duh. It's just like when we cheer for the other team to lose instead of cheering for our team to win. Yes, I invented that cheerleading strategy. It gives us a huge psychological edge against teams that hate losing. I'm gonna go try it right now. Those vegetables are gonna get so inspired. Scott runs off to the kitchen to inspire the vegetables. <laughs> you can still hear his muffled shouting from the back, but it's not bad. It has been quite pleasing. Thanks, now I can finally enjoy this quinoa and baby tear salad without unwanted encouragement. <laughs> For the next week, all the cafeteria food seems extremely eager to get in your mouth. Cheerleading really works. <laughs> Okay, what's our lowest stat now? Charm and money. Let's go with charm. Uh, which is... Here. That day an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. Oh, let's trip up on that bit. You're clearly a natural-born leader. You gain plus two charm. Afterwards, you discover you have been poisoned, and only Vera has the antidote. She does this all the time. It's, a, it's how she invites you to hang out. <laughs> there you are. Thank you so much for coming. I'm embarking on a new criminal enterprise, and I need a consigliere. Consigliere. I don't know how to pronounce Italian. Unless that's French. Consigliere? Mm. The idea is simple, yet brilliant. Think Uber, but for killing people. I call it murder. <laughs> but it turns out the market is flooded with assassination apps. Assassination apps and blood. <laughs> I need a way to get ahead of the pack. And since you're such a good advisor, <laughs> differentiate yourself by being the only service that offers free range, uh, free range organic murders. Viral marketing, literally. Tailor a highly contagious virus to make people love murder. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. They both seem fairly smart. This is cool music. Um. Oh. Maybe one would be creativity. I know that six, six isn't a lot. Oh well, let's see what this one does. Oh, cool. You can do that? Great! You can use my private chemical weapons laboratory. laboratory. And so, uh, this is working better than I ever could have imagined. Demand for murder has gone through the roof since you released that virus. Sure, the side effects include vomiting, bloody tears, male lactation, cobra feet, time dilation, rigor mortis, rectal teeth, renegade spleen microaggression, sudden tattoos, hair trauma, liquefaction, and coughing. Uh, but it's well worth it, well worth it for the profits I'm raking in. Plus, I'm making a literal killing selling people the antidote for all those side effects. <laughs> it's not actually an antidote, though. It's actually just hair in the same difference. <laughs> 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 Did you know they used to give heroin to babies as a cough suppressant? Yeah, the real world is exactly as amoral as this video game. But whatever, you gain plus two creativity and plus one money. Hmm, up to eight creativity. Let's go. Okay. Oh, I hadn't noticed that Baldus was, uh, was now our lowest stat. Uh, No what? Hmm. <laughs> that day you spend some time on the library's PCs, sending malicious spam emails in the hopes of stealing other people's money. It doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? Hmm. You lose minus 10 karma, which isn't a stat in the game, so who cares, and you gain plus 2 money. <laughs> in the middle of everything, a portal opens up and swallows Vera, Vera, Polly, and Liam. 
You dive in to rescue them and straight into the season finale of the Interdimensional Bachelor. Good lord. Help, I'm in danger of spraining my eyes from rolling them so hard. Oh my god, we're on a game show? Yes, indeed. Tonight, you three will answer a series of trivial, I mean, trivia questions. Whoever gets the most points becomes my... How can I win? I don't even care what the prize is. Your what? Your wife? What are her voting premise? Sarah's saying we're, we're supposed to respond to a series of questions and scenarios. Our answers to which will make us more or less likely to achieve a romantic outcome with you. That's extremely problematic. I can't think of anyone who would ever want to play such a tawdry dating game. <laughs> I see what you did there. Everybody stop raising reasonable concerns so I can hear the first question. That's the spirit. Question number one. Describe your ideal marriage proposal. But before Polly can answer, you buzz in yourself. Now's your chance to give an answer that will end the competition and send the prince packing. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Probably boldness. This would be fun, I'm guessing. Uh, let's see what happens. Bold. This one's boldness. <laughs> you unhinge your, your jaw and unleash the bees. Wait, why were there bees inside your mouth? You fool! Wait, what was the voice I used for the one? Uh, you fool! Your childish prank has destabilized the fabric of this pocket dimension. It's coming apart around us. Ah, help! My shoes are turning into lizards! I like those shoes! What's this? All the money in my wallet has turned to moths. You pay for this. No part of me is turning into animals, but I suddenly care about things? This is all your fault. Why didn't you just answer with words? Why did it have to be bees? But you can't take back the past. You spend the next thousand years traversing various horrifying dimensions with the prince and your three angered friends. No time has passed when you return home, but you will never forget. And Liam, Vera and Polly will never forgive. You lose minus two fun and minus one char. <laughs> that was entertaining. <laughs> you find Polly and Scott huddled at your chosen table. If these two are together, it can only mean one thing. I hereby call this meeting, meeting of the Prank Masters to order. order. Prank Master Al, present and accounted for. Chairman Geist, all dressed up and ready to prank. Hey, how come you get, you get to be the chairman? Well, which one of us can throw chairs around the room without ghost powers? Well, I don't have ghost powers, so... Oh, you! I get a chair! Man, but... No time to argue, Scott. We've got to come up with a bottle of food prank before the end of lunch. Oh, yeah. Okay, what if we uh, ate all our food like a good boy? Is that a prank? No, Scott, for the last time, that's not a prank. And I don't eat. But I'm having trouble coming up with another idea. Uh, anybody else? You've been waiting all your life for an opportunity like this. You propose the ultimate food prank. Eat, ev eat everybody else's food, like a good boy. Replace all the food with chairs. <laughs> uh, I don't know what... Fun and boldness? Ah, oh, neither of them are pretty... Oh, well, let's see what happens. Eat other people's food? You can do that? Well, I can't. But I can! Even if it's somebody else's plate? Even if... Exactly half of that was right. Which half? Oh no! No time to figure that out. We got a prank now while the pranking's good. Wait, what about me? Full falls right through me. But you and Scott are already blazing a trail through the cafeteria, gobbling everything in sight. Scott accidentally eats a few people along with their food, but he politely bip them out when they complain. <laughs> By the time school security kissed you out, you would both totally suffer with food and affection for each other. <laughs> Let's go. All right, time to get some of these stats back up. Um... I think this one's fun. 
That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a red party. You gain plus two fun. Between class periods, you discover a severed horse head in your locker. It has a note in its mouth, telling you to meet Vera ASAP. I'm so glad you've come. I have another crime problem which would benefit from your insight. Thanks to your input, murder has cornered the market in app-based assassinations, and yet the other crime lords don't take me seriously. Just because I'm not a 40-year-old man with a scary scar, those sexist morons think this is just a phase for me. Since when did having a killer body and flawless skin disqualify a girl from a life of crime? It's disgusting. How can I show these chauvinist goons what crime really means to me? Come on, think of something. You're my most trusted advisor. <laughs> Quit crime. They'll come crawling back once they see how bad it is without you. Write a song about it. I'll help. That would be creativity, which eight, maybe. And this, I don't know what, this would probably be boldness, actually. Oh, well, let's see what this does. Very well. I've always fancied myself a pop star, just without the singing. Basically, I've just always fancied myself fabulous. Well, job job. Get to work writing me a hit single that will show me, show my true love of crime. One night of frenzied songwriting later. Oh, that's quick. I like big crimes. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> cannot lie. No, I'm not going to be reading this. <laughs> when a girl walks in with a mask on her face yelling, put the money in the briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're right. This song was a great idea. It even helped me rob this bank. I have no idea how I could have read that in her voice. <laughs> The security footage of Vera's bank robbery becomes a number one hit single overnight. She becomes too popular to prosecute. The other crime lords are forced to accept her devotion to crime. Especially when she threatens a repeat performance of her single at every one of their safe houses. <laughs> With all disagreements mended, everyone decides to have a gang war to celebrate. You gain plus two boldness and plus one fun. Oh, good, I need that boldness. Okay. What is our lowest stat? A uh, tie between boldness and charm. We've already been to the gym, so. <laughs> that day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to wipe the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. <laughs> you gain plus two boldness. After, you notice that the bathroom lines are longer than usual. And it's not even giving out free cake in the bathroom there. And that's when his blood got all over Derry's chariot. Not a problem. The good news is that it's never a murder if there aren't three or more witnesses. If anyone tries to argue, the judge remind them that the death, alleged death, took place underwater and therefore is disqualified for regular trial and must be resolved via trial by combat. Aqua combat. Wow, Vera, you're amazing at this. Here's plus 50 money. <laughs> Legal troubles, Monday. You've come to the right, absolutely 100% licensed attorney. I'm sure you'll find everything to be cre completely above board and in order. Or you'll be smart enough to keep your mouth shut if you don't. It's at that moment that Principal Giant Spider walks in and his feet, all of them, <laughs> stop in their tracks. Uh... I forgot the voice that I did for this one. What's going on here? Are you running some kind of illegal law firm out of the school bathrooms? What? Of, of course not. That's, that's absurd. Why? I never. Better step in and help Vera out before the one needing legal advice is here. What? This isn't illegal. Just ask this lawyer. <laughs> Pull out the spider costume to keep on you at all times. Convince... Principal Giant Spider that you're him. Okay. Uh, boldness and smarts. Creativity. Hmm. <laughs> I 
<laughs> this is funnier. Yes, they make an excellent point. As a lawyer, I can attest that my legal practice is, in fact, a legal practice. Principal Giant Spider scratches his head with three legs. Hmm. If you're a lawyer, tell me. Do dogs lick their noses to communicate with fleas? Do the laws of time travel mean that a man can be his own grandfather? Is the moon actually square? No, yes, and never on a Tuesday. Principal Giant Spider nods thoughtfully. Well, thank you for your very legal, legal counsel. Here's your payment. With that, Principal Giant Spider leaves. Guess he didn't need the bathroom that badly after all. Thanks for your help. You know, I've been looking for an illegal legal, legal aid. <laughs> Crushed it. You gain plus two smarts from that quick thinking and plus one money from very legal fee. <laughs> wow. Didn't know the number went that high. Hmm. <laughs> Vera's drinking her customary lunchtime scotch, because you can drink whatever you want at this school, but Scott's not making it easy for her. Hey Vera, what you drinking? Scotch. Why? Because it smells like a delicious forest fire and I'm curious, what's it called? Scotch. Yes? No, that... No, that's what it's called. What? Scotch. Yes? No, I'm not saying your name. I'm saying the name of the drink I'm drinking. It's Scotch. It's mine? Oh, it's mine. Then why is it called Scots? That's just what it's called. Oh, is it like an energy drink for Scots? I mean, it's like an energy drink for Scottish people. Hey, I'm a Scottish person. I'm as Scottish as it's possible to be. I'm the most Scot. <laughs> no, what will it take to get you to drop this issue? Scott's not trying to drop it unless you do something, so you cut and say. <coughs> yeah, it's called Scott's, but today is opposite day, so everything that's Scott's is actually Vera's. <laughs> You're right, Scott, that drink is your birthright. Uh, don't you mean today is an opposite day? <laughs> no. Aha, I'm not sorry, not Vera. I guess I'll be taking your drink. Wink. Wait, time out. If everything that Scots is Vera's, do I have to give Vera all my stuff? Yes. Oh, okay. And does Vera have to give me all of her stuff? Mm, sure, unfortunately, I have no stuff. All my possessions are owned by cleverly disguised shell companies. Now, hand over your wallet. Okay, okay. Boy, opposite day sure is the best, isn't it? <laughs> sure is. After Scott leaves you alone, you and Vera definitely don't spend all his money on <laughs> coke. Hmm. Oh, Amidst the battle, you, fell, you spot a fellow player that seems utterly discouraged. She thinks she's not worth anything at dodgeball, and she attempts to throw a ball at herself. You explain to her the many ways you think she's unique and power and wonderful, while also defending the many pleasures in life. With your help, she's capable of finding reasons to keep playing and gains a sense of self-worth. You gain plus one BFF, sadly she's not part of this game, so that beautiful flinch will take place off screen, and plus two charm. Hmm. <coughs> your wine's barely on what you're doing, though. All you're really concerned about is your situation with Vera. Throughout her latest gang war, you have been her closest and most trusted advisor. Maybe too close. You're worried Vera's become so dependent on your advice she's blind to your true romantic intentions. If only you had the courage to tell her how you really feel. After all, you don't want to end up in the advisor zone. <laughs> <coughs> You're so lost in thoughts of unrequited love you hardly notice Vera sneaking up on you. <laughs> Maybe that's also because of the invisibility cloak you helped it pick out. <laughs> There you are. I was just going to pick you up. We've got a date tonight. A date? Then perhaps your adventures and fictions aren't unrequited. With the heads of Monster City's major crime factions to celebrate the end of the latest gang war. You're such a good and loyal advisor, I couldn't imagine going without you. 
Right, of course. Trying to hide your disappointment, you accompany Vera to the peace conference. But soon, will you? You can have horse racing, but you think I'm going to but if you think I'm going to give up murder's monopoly, you've got your head so far. You've just popped back out your shirt collar. Larry, the actual crocodile, snaps his fangs. Gunbo's a janity of the deranged clown assembly honks in disapproval. Timmy the knife baby chews his rattle menacingly. Alright, you scumbags, settle down. But it's too late. Larry the Croc unveil unveils a wicked machine gun. Gunbozo makes a rocket launcher out of twi twisted balloons. <laughs> and Timmy the Knife Baby produces a lot of knives. Hey, advisor, a little help here? If you don't save Vera now, you'll never have a chance to confess your feelings. So you take a deep breath and confess your feelings. <laughs> ah, my charm boldness, I'm guessing. This would be mixed messages, so... Uh, With no thought of the danger you're in, you turn to Vera and bear your soul. You confess that you've been advising this whole time not out of love of crime, but out of love for her. I, I don't know what to say. Partly because I'm in the middle of a very tense standoff, but the tense standoff suddenly becomes tender as the underlings to the other crime lords follow your example. <laughs> Larry the Croc's salamander sidekick admits to years of repressed, repressed longing. Gunbozo's chauffeur climbs out of his tiny car and begs his boss to give their loves a chance. And Gunbozo's second chauffeur does the same, as so does his third chauffeur, and <laughs> so on. Timmy the Knife Baby's wet nurse confesses a fatal attraction to her little lord. Gunbozo's various chauffeurs jealously fight for his love, killing each other in the process. Timmy the Knife Baby is a baby and so has his wetness arrested for being a pervert. Larry the Croc, being an actual crocodile, marries his salamander sidekick and lives happily ever after. At least until very mighty brought down with a Tommy gun. Well, there's the last ob obstacle to, com to my complete dominion taken care of. Thanks for the distraction. You know, all this time I thought you weren't attracted to me. I thought your interest was, me was purely professional. But as it turns out that your love was even more useful to me than your professional interest. I'll take it. While simultaneously taking control of the city's entire criminal underworld. <laughs> it looks like love really does conquer all. <laughs> As Vera's most trusted advisor and love interest, you gain plus two smarts and plus one money. <laughs> Ooh, I like seeing those big numbers on the side there. Oh, we had one mishap with this one, but let's see. Oh! Hello, uh, Gleason Wolf. How are you doing? Hi. Our spirit to prom? Yes. Let's see what Let's happens. Go. Prom? You know what, my dear advisor? I think lately I'm focusing too much on our crime adventures. It's nice to be rich and feared, but what's the point if I don't get to enjoy life from time to time? So I have the feeling prom night could be a great way to unwind. What do you advise me to do? And then she she winks at you. It's so rare that we don't even have art of her doing it. Also because she has an eye covered. <laughs> In the end, you and Vera have a lovely evening together. Teach them. Followed by lots of thrilling crime adventures. <laughs> hey, that's a cool pick. Vera starts falling for you. She values how you respect her individuality and even support her career by being her trusted advisor. The two of you do a great job of juggling being partners in both love and crime. <laughs> Mostly because Vera is great at everything she does, or so she reminds you constantly. <laughs> Always fun in fiction at least, yes. Also she reminds you that the two of you may be partners in love, but in crime you're still, supe you're still superior and advisor. But that's Vera for you, and under all that ferocious confidence, you can also perceive a deep respect for you. So beautiful, crime is always the answer. I'm not being paid for this quote. How This is outrageous. <laughs> that was cool. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. 
After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened. And it was wonderful. Vera realized she was a character in a video game, which infuriated her. She spent her life making connections and building power because she's not part of the game, she plays the game. So be careful, maybe now she's the one pulling your strings. Miranda got a job being princess of her kingdom, which was actually kind of her job already. Well, you don't see her complaining about it. <coughs> Liam honed his most admirable skill and got a job with it. He now designs momentogram filters. <laughs> hmm? I'm guessing that you... <laughs> hmm. For those three weeks, the monster prom seemed larger than life. And then it was gone, just like that. Wait, which, um, which story were you talking about? The battle for monster prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Woo! Yes, I like that. And the band name is called uh, Player Characters. <laughs> characters <laughs> of the the drum the kick drum the new one. <laughs> A 
time for another one. I have some water. foot statue commemorating an event so that in 1,000 years archaeologists can learn something about the people of our time. What does the statue represent? <laughs> that mind-blowing twist in your favourite TV show that clearly changed the life of everyone forever. I like all that boring stuff they show on the news. That glorious instant when your friend stopped you from texting embarrassing stuff to your ex while hella drunk. Your least favourite political figure being devoured by a rapid rhinoceri, which are also covered in bad badass tattoos. <coughs> what is your soul emoji? The emoji that speaks the truth of your soul. <laughs> Caucasian girl with a turban because... I love the octopus emoji. Best animal on earth. I know five mixed drinks, three drug cocktails, and seven positions that you that involve one or several octopi. <coughs> <laughs> Snowman, because that guy's in the middle of a blizzard and he's smiling. <laughs> he doesn't care about blizzards, and he's a cool hat. <laughs> hmm. Okay. <laughs> what would be your dream first stage? A sweaty and manly wrestling match. A professional meeting where you charm your date with some astonishing business advice. Crimes. A lovely walk in your forest after rescuing your date from a dragon. A wild party in international waters. An art exhibition experimental enough to give you a seizure. <laughs> Let's see... I'm trying to think of each character and who we haven't gotten an ending, gotten a good ending with. Uh, yeah, let's try that one again. See if this goes any better than last time. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Well, if we're going this route, we definitely need fun, so... I've already read this, so... Uh, the stream. Here we go. <coughs> Later that day, you're out shopping with Vera and Polly when a wild cockatrice appears. It gallops through the mall, biting shoppers with its jack beak and turning them to stone. <laughs> Scott and Damien come chasing after it, holding a butterfly net and a frilly dress. This isn't our fault! We had nothing to do with this! Uh, another mythical creature crisis, just when I'm starting to enjoy my shopping. Ah, but it's so cute! I bet that's vis that vicious chicken dragon really knows how to party. Scott and Damien see everyone looking at them and wisely hide inside a clothing rack. What are you going to do about this creature? Ignore it. Be free to it with a delicious cinnamon. How did you know that a cinnamon is a cockatrice's favourite treat? <laughs> just noticed your, <laughs> your chat, so it gulps the tasty cinnamon bun down in one bite and burps happily. As you turn back to your shopping, it follows you. It seems you've got a new friend. Yes. Okay, obviously we need to take this hideous creature out clubbing with us because duh. Not bad. Well, I suppose that is a novel way to spend an evening. 
You take the cockatrice out to all the hottest clubs. They let you in because they don't want to be murdered to buy cockatrice. <laughs> you gain plus two fun and plus one shout. Nice. Where are we? <coughs> you arrive at your table to find the coven eating and Polly and Miranda screaming. <laughs> We're under attack! Alarm! Alarm! Summon the guards! They're using their bizarre mind powers on me. The cute doll one is less is my less attractive evil twin. She uses shades just like me. Clearly because of the evil twin thing. We're not a... Mm, hang on, what voice do I do with this? Mm, we're not attacking anyone. We're eating. What do you mean less attractive? Disgrace. Lies. Subterfuge. Ah, I can feel them in my brain make me less cool. The same with you. Every single lunch hour. You can't allow their friends to be attacked. Quick, save them from this fiendish menace. Just them in Miranda's honor. Drug their food. <laughs> Here we go. You reach into a pouch of drugs and pull out a handful of miscellaneous pills which you sprinkle on the coven's mashed potatoes. What are you doing? Are you trying to drug us, idiot? Winners don't do drugs. You know what? How about we just move to another table? Haha, ah, suckers! They left the dry potatoes! Look like everything's turning out poly. Polly eats all the drugs out of the potatoes and then decides she's a canoe. A canoe that thinks you're kind of cute. Hmm. You are talking to Juan, the small magical Latino cat, when he tells you that you won't ever be as fun as Bob, the scary clown. You accept the challenge. You go straight to Bob, stab him several times, open his bleeding gut and eat some of his guts in order to consume his fun. Really? Do you think that's how it works? Well, it is. You gain plus two fun from poor Bob. <laughs> You're just getting ready to leave uh, when you get a text from Polly. Hey, baby, let's party. How can you refuse such a formal missive? You track her down immediately. Hey, hey you got my text. That's good, because I need some help brainstorming. I'm, I'm going to a party tonight, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be lame, and that needs to change. See, it's a costume party. You know, the, everyone dresses up as their favorite humans? I'm going as a sexy tax attorney. But I'm not sure even the sexiest tax attorney can rescue this party from the depths of lamitude. So, got any ideas to help spicing up? Oh, you've got some ideas, and they're the spiciest. <coughs> Spike the punch with man mandrake root? Turn monsters into actual humans. Okay, you go as a sexy tax attorney, I'll go as a sexy tax evader. Hmm. <coughs> This one might be smart or fun. Mm. This one probably charm, I'd say. I'd say. Hmm. Oh, this one would be creativity, which is at seven. <coughs> I think seven is alright for some things, but not others. Oh, let's see what this does. Oh, cool. Later that night. <laughs> ha! Halt! Taxi Vader! Polly cracks her standard issue tax attorney whip, knocking over a stack of solo cups and upturning the punch bowl. You, st you stand accused of violating Article 69 of the Tax Penal Code. The fine is 1,000 human dollars. Payable, <laughs> payable in spankings. You're more than happy to do the time for your delinquency. The rest of the party goes get into the spirit and <laughs> soon they're all confessing to unpaid taxes. Paying for your crimes never felt so good. You gain plus two fun and plus one charm. And I need water. <coughs> I don't even know 
know if my voice is synced up with the <laughs> game in this instance. Hmm. to your elders and learn valuable lessons. <coughs> Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and the gating, dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. <laughs> you gain plus two smarts. Suddenly, you see Polly vomit exoplasm all over her cell phone. You rush over to help her. Ugh, I just got my 97th hey as an opening line on horrydatingapp.tm Not to, .tm, bracket tm I just had to puke out of pure boredom Hey? Hey? What am I supposed to do with hey? Whatever happened to reaching out to someone that were... <laughs> People are just copy pasting hey and sending it to every monster that looks halfway interesting What about you? Are you a hey person too? I hope not if you read the horny dating app profile of a fun-loving spectral delight such as myself, what would you say to me? <laughs> You're a beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So this would be fun and this would be charm, I think. <laughs> uh, I can never resist a pun. <coughs> I'm beautiful? Like I have a nice booty? Hell yeah, I do! See? This is exactly the kind of specificity you don't get from a hay. You see a banging butt on a ghost, what do you say to her? That you like her butt! <laughs> Shows that you at least looked through all my pictures. And if you like my butt in these jeans, you should see it out of these jeans. <laughs> With that, Polly faces out of her jeans and literally disappears. <coughs> not, exactly, not exactly the kind of out of your jeans you were ideally hoping for, but it's a start. You gain plus two fun and plus one charm. <laughs> Let's go. Scott and Polly are sitting together, laughing their metaphorical asses off. Do Damien, do Damien. Grr, I'm Damien. Look at my stupid red face. I use violence to cover up the fact that I've been brought up to, rever to revere a toxic version of masculinity which has alienated me from my own true emotions. Haha, <laughs> you sound exactly like him. Okay, okay, you do Vera. Uh, I'm Vera. I'm very smart and my hair is pretty and all my friends look up to me because I'm a strong, independent woman. Uh, Scott, I'm not sure you understand how impressions work. I'm not Scott, I'm Vera. You can tell because I just said my name just now. Okay, what about you, Monday? Got any good impressions? I've been voicing all of you this whole time, mate. <laughs> Just one, but it's a real doozy. <coughs> woof, woof, it's me, Scott, a dog boy who is bad at impressions. Look at me, I'm funny, look at me go! I'm thinking they're supposed to be roasts, so... I know you're doing an impression of me because you said my name, but... Oh my god, that sounds exactly like him! It does? Yeah, remember that time we took that impressions class together and we all had to introduce ourselves? Oh yeah, I guess I did say woof woof, it's me, Scott, the dog boy has bad impressions. But I didn't yell it like that. I'm sorry, are you the real Scott? There's two absolutely identical werewolves in front of me and I cannot tell the difference. Polly insists on a smooching contest to determine who the real Scott is. You end up winning in more ways than one. <laughs> Let's go. Hmm. I have read this already. Now. 
<laughs> On your way out, you spot Polly still wearing the lab coat she stole from that human party the other night. She takes it off and throws it at you to get your attention. Yo, yo, yo! That human party convinced me I want to be a scientist! Well, not just any kind, a party scientist! What's a party scientist, you ask? Why, just a scientist who's dedicated to discover the discovering the secret to the raddest party! Through a series of extremely scientific experiments, I aim to discover what exactly makes a party good. So I can distill whatever it is into a vial and drink it! Or, you know, just have really dope parties all the time. Anyway, I'm going to a bar mitzvah tonight and need your scientific, advi uh, scientific advice. What can we do to push this party over the edge? <coughs> okay. Uh, this doesn't really give us much. Electric slide, but with actual electricity. Chemistry. Hmm. Sometimes I can't tell the difference between decisions that require creativity or boldness. This one might be smart, actually. Hmm. Oh, well, let's see. Oh, cool. Later that night. Yeah, ha <laughs> ha! Look at him dance! I don't know why I never thought of this before. It's just basic science. Lightning gives life to a Frankenstein. A Frankenstein is a stitched together math of sexy flailing limbs, which is also what a party is. Lightning is the life of the party. What's that? You want to know who the party mitzvah for boy is? I don't know. I don't know any of these kids. Crashing bar mitzvahs, the height of party culture. <laughs> you have so much fun, you forget to tell Polly she should have uh, said Frankenstein's a monster. You gain plus two fun and plus one charm. <laughs> Let's go. Hmm. Read this already. Isn't that kind of the point of being in a bathroom? Oh. You're hanging out with Polly afterwards, and you're, she's about to show you her latest stunt tattoo when suddenly... My love. Never fear, my lady. I will save you from this last giver's creation. Uh, it's the interdimensional prince, and he's apparently... Here. <laughs> wow, you're so sparkly. Are those tearaway, tearaway pants? Sadly, they are not, my queen. My fashion sense does not operate on the same ethereal plane as your own. Well, I am persistently on fleek. I died on fleek, and I am cursed to roam the earth forever as eternally on fleek. It is this exact on fleekness which I seek. You see, madam, I am in need of a fashionista such as yourself to plan the ultimate wedding. Ours. Huh? Ours? This could be bad. You know Polly's not above getting married as a one-off joke. You've got to stop this madness. <coughs> Throw a party so dope that Polly doesn't want to travel to another dimension. <laughs> Marry the prince yourself. Again, let me see this, so... <laughs> you steal the six lasers from your school's highly controversial physics labs and get the party started! Create store blinds of Galaxia! I did not know you had such six parties in this dimension. Yeah, boy, this school is nationally ranked in the field of partic particle physics. <laughs> I like that. Particle physics. I don't know what they. I don't know what kind of snooty soirees you've got over there in the snooze dimension. But here at Spook Art School, we are <laughs> with coherent light. I am truly humbled by the hardiness of your party. I shall return to my dimension and lament the fact that it is a total party wasteland. <laughs> You don't even notice Prince Lee. <laughs> <Yeah. coughs> anyway, plus two boldness and plus one fun. <laughs> Let's go. You find Polly and Liam not eating, as usual. You know, because they're undead. You know, the food in this cafeteria really is atrocious. It's hardly even worthy my moment, Graham. Ah, uh, what? I don't even eat the food. See? This is exactly what I mean. We can do so much better than these subpar culinary abortions. Oh, I see what you mean. You mean the two of us should have a cook-off? 
What? No. Did you say something? I'm not listening because I'm so psyched about this, psyched about this cookout. At no point did I agree to. I've got a huge advantage though because I've got so many drugs. Oh, you think that? You think you've got the advantage, huh? I've been alive for centuries of culinary history. It's on. <laughs> The two of them dash into the kitchen, ignoring all rules of law, school, and common decency as they commence cooking. Two celebrity chef judges appear to appear to critique the challenges. I think they're both equally horrible, says the cruel British judge. I think they're both equally marvellous, says the overly nice, overly nice British judge. Both judges turn to you. What do you think, tiebreaker, tiebreaker judge? Whose meal truly is the cat's pajamas? <laughs> Liam's, because I think that glass jar of fresh human blood really goes with the parsley sprinkled on top. Polly's, because you literally just made a pair of pajamas for a cat. I mean, I do tend to go to <laughs> interpret things literally. What? Unbelievable, that's not even food. What isn't even food? Oh wait, what isn't even food? A pile of yarn you're knitting in that frying pan, that's clearly a set of pajamas for a cat. Oh, was it supposed to be food? Sorry, I forgot what we were doing. Yes, it was supposed to be food, and yours obviously isn't. Oh yeah? Then how come it won the food contest, huh? Well, because... Yeah, that's what I thought. <coughs> I'll catch you all later. I gotta go find a cat to put these pajamas on. <laughs> later you run into Polly again, and she lets you pet her kitty, if you know what we mean. It means you get to pet the cat she put the pajamas on. What do you think it meant? <laughs> Honestly, be that. Mm. Always time for cats. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you aren't especially good nor inspired. For once, it seems you aren't getting the classic creativity boost from the auditorium. But afterwards, while talking to your classmates, you are having trouble conveying your point in a discussion, so you decide to convey it through music. You start singing, and suddenly everyone else joins you in a kick-ass musical number. It's so amazing that the people with whom you are arguing totally get your point and change their minds once the song is over. You gain plus two creativity. <coughs> But none of that matters. You're late to meet Polly for more party experiments. Alright, our research is progressing well so far, but we've got a pretty limited sample size. I need to know that we can make any party the best, not just some parties. So tomorrow morning, we're gonna crash a funeral! If we can make that fun, we can make anything fun. So, brainstorm time. How can we put the fun back in funeral? <coughs> Possess the body of the deceased, bringing him back for one last party. We can Bernie style. Bouncy castle! <laughs> this one sounds more interesting. Let's uh, see what the stats. Um, uh, hmm. Oh well, let's see what this does. Fun, cool. Whoa, that was awesome! I was totally inside that dude! And then when they were like, does anyone else want to say a few words? I was like, oh, oh, me! <laughs> they totally freaked out! And then it was like, let's turn this funeral into a wedding! And I got married to like 11 people who are all widows now because I left that dude in a heap in the dance floor because whatever, weddings rule! Hey, Monday, you know what? I think we're getting really close to the true formula for a rad party. You're the best science partner I've ever had. You guess she hasn't had lots of science partners. You doubt she even knows the real definition of science, but she's too happy for you to correct her now. <coughs> Come on, the night's still young. Let's go turn an all-night laundromat into an epic rave. Those washing machines didn't know what hit them. You gain plus two creati creativity and plus one fun. The monster prom draws near. It's poly time! <laughs> What? Prom? Of 
course! Prom night will be another perfect opportunity to conduct our experiments in party science. So clever of you. That's why you're the best science partner. That's not what you meant, but sure, why not? Sooner than expected, a prom night is here and the two of you are finally ready to crack the ultimate party formula. You free some wild animals, you do lots of ecstasy, you awaken the dead, you even do the dance of joy. Everything is perfect, you feel floaty and full of energy, you see beautiful shiny lights, and you feel connected to everyone. Obviously most of that is thanks to the ecstasy, but still! <laughs> you feel like you've conquered the night and put a flag with your names on the peak of life itself. Then dawn comes. By now you're on a hill by the sea, watching the sun slowly come up. No idea how you got there, but who cares? You're at peace, watching the gentle tide of the morning, when you realize Polly has a hand over yours. She looks at you. <laughs> you know what, Monday? This might be the Molly talking, but I think I finally got it. All these parties have had been wildly different, and all of them have been the very best. I put a lot of thought into it, and I can only think of one thing they all had in common. <laughs> I think the formula for a perfect party must be sharing it with the right people. You don't answer. You just hold your hand as you spend the morning watching the sun slowly coming up over the sea together. <coughs> Monday. Most likely you'll be eaten by. Uh, most likely you'll be tasty if eaten by other people. I doubt that. <laughs> Unless you were really into seafood. Uh, Polly's quote. Whoa, these shrooms get kicked in. Was that a better quote? Salami. <laughs> Alright. Alright. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened and it was wonderful. Polly graduated from doing lots of ayahuasca, 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 whatever language that is. Um, and now she appears to hallucinating people and acts as their spirit animal. Damien loved fire to the very end. Unfortunately, that wasn't a super legal affair, and so he ended up in prison for arson. Fortunately, prison was flammable. <laughs> Scott turned out to be a genius and became the most renowned mathematician in the country. Just kidding, he became an athlete, duh. <laughs> He's still a bit of a simpleton, but as lovable and good-hearted as ever. <laughs> oh. <coughs> Prepare to bring chaos and destruction to this realm. It's party time. I don't know what that was. Yeah. <laughs> 
One or two more. What's the, <laughs> what's the sexiest type of knowledge a lover can have? Lyrics to all Disney songs. Obscure 80s movie trivia. How to set, how to set stuff on fire. How to make a killer cocktail out of anything. All of the principles to build a financial empire. Uh, sports things. Hmm. Oh. Thanks for the follow, uh, Pomeranian was taken. <laughs> both charm and fun. Mm. You notice Vera showing off an elaborate new necklace to Miranda. They're the crown jewels of Ulimura. My family acquired them in a cutthroat business merger. Do you like them? Oh yes, very much. Such a shame about the Limurian royal family though. Watch that they're all dead at the hands of their own servants. No, oh, no, that was unavoidable once the true tragedy had taken place. They were no longer loved by their subjects. Fear, you mean? Oh no, fear is so scary. Love is what matters. I could not disagree more. You see, you there, settle this dispute for us. What is the best way to let people know how powerful you are? Buy their houses, burn them down, then replace them with a water park. You don't need to convince anyone. Just make everyone who doesn't love you disappear. <laughs> hmm. Character or... well, it'll be character eventually, but... Does this also require stats? Hmm. <coughs> oh. Well. Hmm. Ah yes, this is Daddy's strategy. The amazing thing is that once the bad people start to disappear without explanation, 
Even people who used to be bad start being very good. It's like magic and so humane. Do you happen to know where your father put all those people who disappeared? Put them? No, Zilly, they disappeared. Like a magic trick. Ah, yes, I see. You gain plus two charm and plus one smarts, as well as yet another reason never to visit Miranda's kingdom. <laughs> hmm. Let's see what this does. Hey, why would you study and prepare for your future when you can come here and buy some weird stuff instead, am I right? <laughs> yeah, I'm selling a, selling a corpse. It's like some kind of fashion accessory. It's not as if I'm trying to dispose of it. Dragony, a class. So cheesy and stupid that you can't stop reading it. I never thought I'd say this, but now I'm super into dragon apps. Remember, the <laughs> Remember when these used to be cool? Now they aren't. But they're so ridiculous that they're still fun in their own twisted way. Let's see. <laughs> Why, the hardest thing is being yourself, Donnie. But Latin accent is a close second, to be honest. Are you sure about this? You can always use online encyclopedia to get the general idea and still be able to act if you're, as if you read it. See, I'm wise enough to know when a gift needs given. Yeah. <coughs> it has flames and a skull and even a knife. With this, you can murder your enemies, go to prison, make ev everyone your slave, and then murder them too, and go to some kind of super prison? Street cred plus 9,000. Ah, oh, really? That's the one I just unlocked. The power totem of Zgord, ruler of the Dark Realms. I'm not quite sure if, this, if it's safe for the school and the entire fabric of reality to sell this to high schools. But a girl needs a new pair of badass boots. <laughs> so, so never mind safety. Literally just a white blanket with two IOs in it. You'd have to be an idiot to mistake this for a ghost costume, but most of our classmates are idiots. Crafting your art requires years of hard work, uh, education from great minerals, and tons of raw talent. But damn, that sounds exhausting. So that's still the most motivational poster for now, okay? High school social life is so hard nowadays that are and that PR agent is totally a thing. I think I'll save up. You, you get that the whole point of running a business like this is to sell, sell stuff to people, right? I think you're missing the point, sweetheart. Oh, I'll be back, don't worry. That day you spent some time on the library's PCs, playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision. But who cares, this time it paid off. You gain plus two money. One more. Okay. One more needed. Later you hear some kind of muffled squawking. And you see that Damien's backpack seems to be a thrashing violently. Yay, Monday is here. I've been waiting <laughs> all day to show someone Damien's cock. Miranda, <clears throat> Miranda, do you ever listen to yourself? <laughs> Miranda pulls Damon's cock out of his backpack and the rooster begins, <laughs> begins preening himself continually. <laughs> Isn't he the sweetest little thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna use him for cockfighting. Specifically, we're going to have him cockfight the cockfighters to teach them a lesson about why you shouldn't make cocks cockfight. Now we just gotta find a way to sh make sure that the our cock wins the anti cock fight and cock fight. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, what stats are needed for this? This is probably creativity, so I shouldn't really go for that. This one, I'm guessing that's charm. Yes. Ah, That's the sweetest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. I shall give our noble fighter my royal blessing. Here, darling precious rooster, take this ring from my, pro from my royal family. 
Now it is. <laughs> I'll have to use the same trick to give an octopus ring to an octopus and a ghoul ring to a ghoul. Miranda, please don't go around announcing to people that we put a cock ring on a cock together. Oh, Why ever not? Surely this is a compliment to be proud of. And they're off with the rooster. <laughs> you, two, you keep them in your thoughts, hoping things will turn out well. Later, you see an art <laughs> article in the newspaper say, Local cock wins cock fight against cock fighters. All animal cruelty ended forever. <laughs> Miranda even gives a shout out to Monday. She likes you. She really likes you. You gain plus two creativity and plus one fun. Ah, I needed that for you to do. Oh, still in fun. Let's go. Speaking of which. Read this already. Plus two fun. Oh, zoot. <laughs> Should have gone to the library. You notice Polly bent over her phone while Miranda tries to peek over her shoulder. Something really interesting must be going on on Polly's phone. When you get closer though, you see that Polly's just on horny dating app to you again, swiping right on everybody. Miranda seems entranced though, and a little worried. What? Well, what did you say this thing was called again? Horny dating app to you. And is it an app for finding true love? Um, sure. But, but I never knew. I have spent countless hours going to royal balls and kissing frogs and pretending to be a man in a magical slumber when I could simply have been using this app. I mostly just use it for collecting pictures. Uh, what are these? Tokens of affection? Oh, alas, to be so far behind in my quest for love. I am 19 years old, practically an old maid, and only now learning of this? Oh, how have I ever make up for lost time? <coughs> this one's probably charm. And this one is money. Oh no, that's smart. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, of course. I will simply purchase the app and, re and require all of its most attractive and heroic users to date me. It is exactly how my father met my mother, except with the Indian Ocean instead of horny dating app DM. Po Polly, I will give you $230 million for horny dating app DM. I mean, okay, but like, I don't actually own the company. What do you mean? I thought you said you had horny dating app TM. Yeah, on my phone, I have a copy of the app. I don't own any successful internet startups. Oh yes, I had forgotten you before. I'm so sorry. It's cool. Well, anyway, I'm off to buy a hoarding teasing app TM. Now, goodbye. Uh, have fun? Now might be a good time to uninstall it from your phone. Meanwhile, you gain plus two creativity and plus one smarts. <laughs> Let's go. Ah, still don't have enough of that um, unlockable thing. <laughs> you arrive at your chosen table to find Miranda folding napkins at Vera. Do you want to know what this one is for, Vera? No. I'll take that as yes. The rose-shaped napkin fold is for birthdays between the ages of 16 and 22. Miranda's ha hands move fast as lightning, turning the rose into a gorgeous white swan. By contrast, the swan, the swan folding is for first weddings, third weddings, and swan giveaways. As a fashion enthusiast, I have never been so bored by a piece of fabric. Oh, and this black swan folding is for weddings where you plan to brutally murder all the guests. Not very popular black swan wedding folding. Okay, that's sort of cool, but I'm still aggressively uninterested. You happen to have some napkin folding skills yourself. Maybe you can spice up this interaction. You decide to show off your most impressive neck and fold. <laughs> <coughs> if you fold a napkin like so, it creates a self-aware napkin whose sole purpose is to fold more napkins. This arriving snake fold is when it is time for it to leave Vera alone and stop explaining napkin folds. Oh, that's adorable. Look at it folding out of your napkins. It's like a tiny adorable surf. 
It looks like it's folding the other napkins into more self-folding napkins. I know, it's so efficient. Go, little napkin surf. Be free. Aren't you worried this will turn into a self-replicating napkin scenario, progressing diametrically until the world is nothing but napkins? Why? That sounds lovely. <laughs> God, you're impossible. You seem to have mispronounced impeccable. Whatever. I'm leaving before the napkin folk take over the world. Vera leaves you alone for a romantic lunch with Miranda. You can't hang out too long, though. You've got to stop those napkins before they take over the world. <laughs> Good luck. Alright. Yeah, right, come on. That day you spend some time on the library's PCs, mining some bitcoins. This is supposed to be this is supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency. But you guess that nobody actually has any idea how it really works. Anyway, you gain plus two bitcoins, which is equal to plus two million dollars. no. Yeah, two million dollars. Which, unfortunately, is equal to two monster dollars, so plus two money. Not used to those big numbers. <laughs> you catch Miranda monologuing about her problems to no one. She often does this. It's like she's accustomed to having a royal scribe following her every sh everywhere she goes. Oh, whatever shall I do about my army? We haven't had a proper war in months, and the soldiers are becoming ever so anxious. I've tried sending the servants to give them tummy rubs, and even putting extra leaving sticks in their cages, but they just kill the servants with the sticks. I never thought managing an entire branch of the military, military would be so challenging. How can I possibly keep my soldiers entertained? Hmm. Divide them in half and make them fight a practice war. A thousand pinatas. That'll be fun, I'm guessing. This might be smart. Ah yes, a healthy live fire scrimmage. <laughs> I should have no trouble no trouble organizing such a thing. My lieutenants inform that the soldiers bloody hate each other. And as an extra bonus, anyone who dies during the practice war will be guaranteed not to die in a real war. That ought to reduce war casualties significantly. It is as Father always says, any problem can be solved by dividing in, by dividing people into groups and making them kill each other. I never understood it until now, but these are such wise words. Miranda skips off to organize a little bloodbath. You gain plus two boldness and plus one smarts. Okay, let's see if the shop is still around. Let's go. Give me your money. <laughs> hey, last night I read this article on how money causes pocket pocket cancer in the long run. You don't want to get pocket cancer? Quick, give me that dangerous money you have until you still healthy pockets. Huh? Oh, it's not in stock. Oh well. Guess it's only available at the start of the game. Um, given that other needs have the event tag on it, I'm using... Oh, well, let's just go for the mystery. See, I'm wise enough to know when a gift needs given. Yeah. Drawing from a random kid. I know the composition is not that great and, and the color palette lacks depth, but whatever, it's a gift. <coughs> nice. You waltz over to Miranda and Scott's table to find them peering suspiciously into a burger. Secret sauce... Se oh, wrong accent. Secret sauce, secret sauce, what dread mysteries do you conceal? Whoa, do you think the secret sauce can talk? Cool! Hey, secret sauce, what are you made out of? No, Scott, my question was rhetorical. Awesome, mine was loud! <laughs> oh, it's no use, we'll never send the active ingredient of this delicious secret sauce. Unless... You have an idea, Monday? <clears throat> the blood of your father's enemies, Miranda. That's why it's so delicious. You're overthinking this, Scott. It's a sauce made of secrets. <laughs> blood? Of the air people? I didn't know the, uh, the high school cafeteria cared, cared about my family's age and rivalry. And everyone knows the air people bleed candy syrup and barbecue sauce. I should have known. 
You know, I don't normally eat food myself. I have served for that. But I may have to make an exception. Oh, more blood. Bloody blood all the time. But pretty... Well, wrong voice, but... Like, pretty much every full moon. Scott's a little disappointed, but you don't care. You're busy sharing a saucy burger with Miranda. Everything is fine until Juan, the small magical Latino cat, asks, What do you think you're doing? Damn, you didn't remember you suck at dancing. Why you decide to go on and pretend it's a new dance mode? It's apparently called the Groovy Moussaka. Juan looks at you and he asks you to teach him the Groovy Moussaka. In no time, half the party is following your steps, enjoying the Groovy Moussaka all together. It's a party to remember. You gain plus two fun and a cool story to tell your grandkids someday. Afterwards, a royal procession 500, <laughs> a royal procession 500 members strong informs you that Miranda has requested your presence at dinner tonight. The restaurant she's chosen is so fancy its name is unpronounceable by anyone making less than six figures. But with all these heavily armed guards around, you think it's unwise to refuse, and so later that night, this resta restaurant is is remarkably charming for a low-born establishment. <laughs> Granted, the flatware is only platinum, not diamond and this wine seemed to be significantly less than a thousand years old, but at least our table is held up by three weeping serfs as it ought to be. <laughs> Garçon, one bowl of rubies and a bottle of actual gold, if you would be so kind, and my suitor will have... Quick, pick something before she realizes that you've never been anyway fancy fancier than Wilma's chicken hunt. <laughs> okay, charm, and fun. Or my... Ooh. Well, this is 8, and this is either 9 or 11. Hmm. Ah, 8 wasn't enough. You close your eyes and point at a random item on the menu to prove your point. Luckily, you chose the cheap on, cheaper, cheapest item on the menu. Less luckily, the cheapest item on the menu is garbage soup. Goodness, the third classiest restaurant in the city, and you chose to eat garbage soup. If you're trying to tell me that my beauty enables you to eat garbage, I'm shocked and insulted. Waiter, may I please have a box for my gold leaf salad? I'm going to be leaving immediately. Why do you think I have garbage soup at this restaurant? And why is it so expensive? You lose minus two fun and minus one money. I just got that fun. Okay, so I think we only had one. Uh, mess up with Miranda, which might tip the balance, but we'll see. We haven't had a rejection from Miranda yet, so let's see. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Disgusting. You just said it for me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing someone. Uh, like, like right now. Hey, you, peasant. Miranda is just waving her hand at a distracted passerby. I order you to re rescue me from the awkward situation. See, I know him. <laughs> Farewell. <coughs> I think we've already had this one. Um, <laughs> Funny image there. Your failure made you so despised by society that you were exiled to the wilds where you joined a pack of wolves. Still, you are so bad at social interaction that you also failed at getting a date for wolf prom. <laughs> Monday. Most likely to be Razgar, the space goddess of illusion in disguise. I won't deny that. <laughs> Miranda. Most likely to die in a coup d'etat. Well, most likely to be in a coup d'etat, so sure. Okay. Life happened. Here we go. Miranda started a non-profit to help countries without a monarchy. Because all countries should have the right to be graciously ruled by the Mer Kingdom. Vera built the Oberlin Empire into endless greatness. 
They own a shameless number of companies. It's known that they're also into lots of sketchy businesses. But no one does anything about it. I mean, who would try to stop Vera Oberlin? Uh, we had this one already. Player characters. <laughs> Oof, I don't know, I've got time for another one. finish early. Um, who's online? It's right to you again. Gracias. 